So, I'm um, delighted to welcome Dunja Mladenic. Uh, Dunja is leading the AI lab at the Josef Stespan Institute in Slovenia. Is that correct? Yes, <laughs> currently. Currently, okay. So, Dunja, could you tell us a little bit what you, what you do there at the, at the Institute? Well, I'm associated with the Institute as a senior researcher, but also with the Josef Stefan Postgraduate School, where I'm teaching uh, classes. So I do both. I teach and do research, even though research is most of my time. So the group I'm leading is about 35 researchers and students, and we work mainly on text data, multimedia data, data mining, machine learning, uh, semantic technologies, data visualization. So there is a, a whole bunch of other um, research areas that get into that, but we are mainly in artificial intelligence. Um, and in our research, we also do <coughs> develop prototype solutions, demonstrating the research results. And over the last 10 years, we have developed quite, quite many interesting demo uh, systems and services, which are also publicly available via our main national research institute in Slovenia. So whatever we do, it's publicly available. And we are very happy if people you know, get around and check things and so on and get some inspiring ideas out of that. So how do you juggle this? Uh, so you're teaching at the university and you're also leading the research institute. How do you sort of manage your time to fit both of those activities in? It's not so difficult to be honest because I do teach only in postgraduate school. So majority of my time is not really teaching, it's more doing research and it's also meeting students. I have weekly meetings with students I'm advising uh, which is great fun, but also takes at least two days uh, of my week. <coughs> and managing 35 people, that sounds quite a, quite a job. Actually, it's not so difficult as I was afraid of. It's also because I have great support team. And even though I'm currently leading, I'm saying that currently and, you know, kind of underlining because I really hope in a few years someone else will take over and then someone else will take over. I do believe in... Uh, changes. I don't believe in getting on some position and sitting there till you are retired. So can you tell us a little bit about your, your kind of daily schedule? Are days quite typical or do you have a kind of a structure to them or are they not so structured? Not really structured. I mean, it depends where my meeting starts. Uh, I do start with my family. It's always like depends who is taking our son to the school, me and my husband. A day is immediately a little bit different depending on that. Um, I usually have meetings, at least one per day. Uh, I do some reading. I used to start my day with working day with doing reading and programming and thinking and discussing and maybe have a meeting here or there. Now it's getting more into having meeting and then having meeting and then maybe doing some reading and so on. So it's a little bit frustrating somewhere, sometimes, so I'm trying to make a bit more space for just being my, by myself and doing research and doing programming. Um, and I hope it's going to get better and better. And how do you cope with, uh, I would imagine there are a lot of things happening at the same time. You're running a lot of different yes. research projects and you have to kind of coordinate all these things. That seems to be quite a sort of a multi-parallel tracks yes. kind of sort of it activity. How do, you, how do you feel about that? It is. It's a, a lot of a switching of context. It's not easy, I should confess. That's maybe the, the most difficult part. It's not easy and it's not like switching you know, between 10 things. It's switching between I don't know how many, I can't count. And there are constant interrupts and so on. So it's really a luxury to have three or hours just for one thing and I'm trying also to explain to students that they should really enjoy working on their PhD thesis only because that's probably the last time they will have just one thing on the track. Uh, so it's not easy but you know things are interesting and the most difficult thing in that story for me is really setting priorities because sometimes I finish day a bit frustrated because I figure out I did many things, but none of them was on my original list for that day. So it's a kind of, you know, many interesting things, so you have to decide what is important. So for that job, what kind of um, skills do you think you, you may personally bring, which are kind of unique characteristics, perhaps, that you personally have, or which are useful for that job? Well, 
I don't know if it's useful just for that job. I think it's useful generally in life to have um, to have vision of what you want to do and to have courage to go after that and persist in following that. So I think that's always, I mean, it's also in, in research. In research, maybe a bit specific is that even though you have some vision to follow, you have a goal, you have to kind of keep being open to alternative views, being kind of listening to others, getting for new knowledge, being um, open enough and brave to also, you know, confess if you maybe made mistake or maybe what you thought was a really good idea didn't turn out to be. So maybe that helps in research more than in other fields, I don't know, but it's um, definitely uh, courage is something I feel it's important and persistence and I think I'm good, at least in persistence. <laughs> <laughs> so if we go back uh, somewhere earlier in your career, I'm just wondering what got you interested in this area and, and was there any sort of particular thing that you could sort of mention which sort of really sort of put you on this particular research track or got you interested in this area? Uh, it's difficult to pinpoint one thing. Uh, it did start with my family, as things usually start, at least as I can remember. Uh, both my parents had university degree and um, pointed out the importance of knowledge, getting knowledge in your life, getting skills, being independent, being able to support yourself throughout life. So that was something that uh, I really believed in, I grew up with that. Um, and then whether to go really to scientific career or maybe more practical, I think that was also um, conditioned on which people I met, you know, which courses I took, which opportunities I got. I got national scholarship for a PhD program, so that got me kind of also into the story. Um, and I, I think I was really lucky with uh, great co-workers at the Institute, uh, really supportive and kind of open for young people joining. And I hope we still maintain that uh, openness for new people and young people joining. So I guess there must have been at some point other things that you were potentially interested in doing, not necessarily mm -hmm. some particular branch of science. Was, was there something else which you were curious about exploring when you were quite young? Um, I remember discussing with my father uh, before deciding for computer science uh, what I really want to do in my life. And I was like, oh, I have fun doing math and you know, solving logical problems, but I really wonder how, how this world comes and you know, what is important and, and asking some philosophical questions and reading like books by, I don't know, Fromm was my big uh, author and then thinking about and about psychology and how these processes, maybe I want to go for psychology or I just want to, you know, figure out, you know, how, how are all these things in life? And then my father was, yeah, that's interesting, but how about sticking with math and kind of making sure you get some job and <laughs> you can live out of that? So computer science sounded like a good compromise. It wasn't pure math, it was more, for me at the time, it was more applied math. Uh, but I still maintain this interest for human psychology and communication and, you know, kind of self-observing and awareness of what you do and how you communicate and what is important in your life. So some people might say that computer science sounds a little bit of a kind of boring, nerdy, very mm. sort of unfashionable area. How do you respond to, to that potentially? Well, it just depends on, on, on the angle, it depends on what you see, you know, like in any situation in life, you can see a, a glass half full of water or half empty. And in computer science, there are many views, there are many things you can do. And I think it has whole range, that's why I like it. It has like a, a range of, it can be technical, you can do technical things, you can do hardware, you can do, uh, you know, programming based on instructions somebody gives you or you can create things, or you can solve problems, or you can do algorithms, or you can interface with people and figure out you know, what needs to be in the system to be programmed, or which problems they have you can solve with machine learning or with general computer science. So it's a whole specter, and that's what I think is nice, because it covers 
different kind of people, we are different. So it gives opportunity for different uh, skills and different interests to be expressed through computer science. So now going back to the present about your, your institute, how many, how many women are in your institute that, on, on the research side? Well, I should say it's National Research Institute, so it's also chemistry, biology, physics, uh, also computer science, of course. I was wondering more about the particular, maybe the lab. The, the in our lab? lab? Yeah. So we have about, I said, 35 people, maybe 20 to 25 percent are women. So I think it's nice, like it's nice if I compare with the average in computer science. And we are striving to get more. You know, we just give opportunity to any regardless gender, male or female, that comes or knocks on our door. Uh, but I do believe that it's, it's more fun and it's more productive to work in a kind of balanced groups. And gender is one of the dimensions you can balance. It's, it's just the difference, the different coverage. If you would like, uh, if you have a whole space, you want to cover more dimensions of that space, more of the space, so you have people of different profiles, of different cultures, of different whatever views. So did, when you were sort of um, doing your training, if you like, and you were you're doing your studying, did you sort of encounter any kinds of difficulties in, in being a woman and in, in trying to establish a research career in any, in any way? Did you feel disadvantaged, perhaps, in some sense? Not really, not really. I mean, I, I actually enjoyed um, rational thinking and kind of... Uh, I enjoy working with male-female like, but uh, I didn't have problems with being maybe the only one, and that was often like the only, you know, in the meeting room, everyone was men except myself. I almost didn't notice. But then when we start getting more and more females in our group, I started to notice the difference and I started to notice that, oh, this is even more fun because it's kind of more variety, like having more colors, uh, you know, it, it's, it's nice. Is it, is it ever difficult to, to manage the men in your sort of experience? Is it, do you have a kind of a difficulties with managing men or it's, uh, yeah. as a woman? In, no, in, in no, 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 not at all. And I wouldn't say it's a, I don't see difference in managing. Uh, in gender, I see more difference in uh, personality, like how, uh, what is the personality of a person, and the most difficulties I think personally I have, which means I don't know how to manage it, if people are kind of closed and not open to discussion, not open to, if they don't have enough courage, then I kind of don't know how to help or support, I'm talking about students. Uh, but I don't see difference between um, men and female in that sense of handling. And when you thought about getting this research career, I would imagine that there are certain questions, you know, if, if you were wanting to have a family, for example, you know, it's perhaps a long process to get to the point where you're going to have a, a permanent uh, job in science. Did you, looking back, did you remember thinking about those kinds of choices that you may have to make in the future, of family, versus career, mm -hmm. and how did that affect your, your choices? That's an interesting question, because I really didn't think uh, in that, that terms. I didn't think it that way. I guess I always believed that, and that was part of my family uh, belief, that if you have knowledge, if you have skills, um, you can always find some work. So I didn't feel like if I don't get permanent position in research, I'm in danger and I couldn't, you know, support my family. I believe in myself so I can do different things. Nevertheless, um, having a family and having a child, we have a, a boy who is nine already, but uh, that was a big challenge. Also because I used to work uh, or do research. If you can call it work, it's not work for me. For me, it's a kind of life. It's fun. Um, basically all day long till midnight you know till you're kind of you're tired and then you figure out oh maybe it's midnight it's past midnight i have to go to sleep because things are so interesting well i had to make and i decided for that a conscious decision that at least you know one day in a week it's going to be with no work because i want to spend time with my family and want to spend time with uh, my son 
I think it was a good decision, but it required a discipline as well. It was like, you know, research is 24 hours a day. Uh, I also like spending time with myself and doing some sports or, you know, reading. I can do that 24 hours a day. And I can enjoy with my family 24 hours a day. So there are at least three different things you can do all the time. So it's juggling between them, which is really challenging for me, how to do that and not feel bad about yourself. You know, I, when, I, when our son was little, I felt like, how am I going to do that? There are all these interesting research things happening and I don't have enough time to follow everything I want. But then I was like kind of, but I really need to spend more time with the baby, so I'm going to do that. I can't. It's, it was like overwhelming feeling. And what helped me was actually a kind of role models or, and having discussions with other women in science. Uh, not that they could tell me what to do, but I just recognized it's normal. It's natural to be in this kind of, kind of challenge. And you just do your best and feel good about that. Do you think there, there could be changes or would there, are there things that you would have liked to have been different in perhaps the institution or in society which would have made your life a little bit easier in that sense in, in this juggling of family, work, mm. career? Mm. Is there anything that you can sort of think, well, this would have, it would have been great if only it would have been like yeah. that? So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is a, a little thing which I remember I was thinking is a child care, fa a child care facility inside the institution where you work. <clears throat> so we were lucky, we had the uh, help of kind of friends and so on. Um, but if that wouldn't be the case, that would be helpful. Like when you have a, a small child, pre preschool child, I thought it would be helpful if you can just, you know, do some work and then, you know, just drop to the next door and see how the child is doing or go together for lunch and so on, which I couldn't do. But on the other hand, what we did, I should say both my husband and myself, we are both in AI research. What we did was just taking our son to conferences and project meetings. Uh, and that worked great. It wasn't easy. It was like, you know, energy demanding, resources demanding. But I think that was the right decision for us. So our son attended <laughs> many conferences. So his first conference was machine learning knowledge discovery when he was five months old. And of course he didn't you know, have much of the conference, but it was my personal choice. I wanted to go for the conference. So we went all together. And um, the community and the colleagues at the Institute were really helpful. I was surprised, even though it's male dominated research area, People were open and tolerant and like, I didn't get any comment on like, you know, you're sitting in a, a conference room with a baby stroller uh, somewhere in the back, but still, you know, it can be disturbing. People can think like, oh, you should stay at home, but I really didn't get any, any comment. I don't know, but I didn't feel bad about that. And I think that was good. And that was also our way uh, of just showing one potential way how you can handle this work-life balance. So if you think uh, now more about your current position, uh, you're, very, you're already very senior there. I'm just wondering, what's the future for you? What do you see, what would you like to see your role becoming in, in the next five, ten years? Well, as I say to, to uh, students, I would really like to see each of them getting, you know, at least as far and having getting projects themselves, advising uh, young people themselves. Um, and I would like to kind of get more into, as I said, trying to get more time for doing my own research, more time for, you know, reading, more time to just go back to what really got me into a research and scientific career and make space for the others to get through their cycle. And immediately in the future for you this week? You, you go back to Slovenia and... I go back to Slovenia, to Ljubljana, <clears throat> and I meet my husband and son for a night because next morning they are flying out for another meeting and another conference. So it's fun and I'll be spending some time by myself and of course going for work and having some meetings. Next week I'm meeting the director of the institute, um, connected to, actually I can tell you, connected to a conference we're organizing soon, which is uh, 
celebrating 20 years of Slovenian AI. We have association and it's 20 years since we established it and we'll have a kind of, you know, um, celebration of that and a very interesting conference. So I'm meeting the institute director and we would like to see how to promote the event and how he can contribute and so on. So that's immediate next future on my agenda. You, you're, you, you're very proud of the, <coughs> the way things have turned out in, for Slovenia and AI and your contribution. You feel proud of what you've helped to set up there? Yes, yes, indeed I am. I am proud and I'm especially proud actually of young people. We have a great group of enthusiastic people <coughs> and I think it's really important. And it's important to support them to develop their career, to develop personally and I see great results, which is very nice, which is very fulfilling in a way for a person, also for a career, but also on, in my personal life. Wonderful. Danny, thanks very much and I uh, hope things go well. Yeah, thank you, David.